You mean would, you would like a story now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just well, tidbits. Just a couple examples of that. Well, okay. Well, here's a story. I, uh, yeah, for whatever it's worth, this is a story which happened to my brother um, years and years ago. He and a girlfriend took uh, psychedel took uh, Hawaiian wood rose up behind Boulder, Colorado, in the early spring, and. Uh, they had never taken Woodrose, and so they parked their car and they hiked down this trail and uh, took the Woodrose and became hopelessly lost. And the, the trip lasted hours longer than they intended. And finally, they realized that they were hopelessly lost. It was getting dark and that they were going to have to spend the night in the mountains at about uh, 10,000 feet uh, behind Boulder, and that they probably weren't going to live through this experience. They had no matches. They had nothing. And so then darkness fell, and they had no notion of where they were. And finally, just scanning these valleys and mountains, uh, my brother saw a set of headlights up on a mountain. And he realized then that there must be a road up there, and that if they could climb up to where he had seen these lights, they might be able to flag somebody down on this road and save their lives. OK, so by this time, they had been out in the, in the woods for about 10 hours going through this. So they scramble down into the bottom of this valley. They scramble up the other side, come up uh, to where they think this road is. And what they discover is the parking lot where they left the car. And what they discover is the car's lights are on. But the car was locked. And the car's lights couldn't have been on for 10 hours because the battery would have completely run down. The car still had enough juice that you could start the engine. So the car's lights had been on no more than a half an hour. Woo, 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 woo. What does it all mean, Mr. Natural? Well, I think Mr. Natural said, it don't mean shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it means. but uh, And there are just endless uh, these kinds of stories. Uh, and, and some aren't quite so supernatural, but some are more supernatural. Well, here's a story I find, uh, I find very, very hard to believe, but that was told to me by someone of impeccable reputation. Uh, this guy was um, up in the Sierras somewhere uh, uh, on a vision quest, and he had made his camp by a, a little lake, and um, he dropped mushrooms. And uh, a, a boloid, do you all know what a boloid is? It's one of those big green crackling meteors that pass over. A boloid came over about an hour into the trip and disappeared over a nearby hill. And he was just amazed. And <laughs> the mushrooms were just coming on. And then, you know, the trip happened and he was swept away. And he basically forgot about the boloid. And uh, after a couple of hours of tripping, the mushroom said, now it's time to walk. And uh, he said, oh, now it's time to walk. And it said, walk this way. And it directed him. And he walked a distance of about two or three miles and finally came to the edge of a, of a lake. And, uh, and he couldn't walk any further. And, and so he stopped. And he was just standing there contemplating this circumstance that it had told him to walk. And now he was at the edge of this. And he was wondering, am I supposed to walk on the water? Or what is going on here? And he looked down. And there was the boloid. And it was, it was worth several thousand dollars. He has it. He showed it to me. 
and it was I mean I mean it's an object from God knows where I mean just absolutely screaming with the cosmic abyss and the karma of the aeon and if you've ever tried to find meteorites you know it is something you cannot look for because they can land anywhere literally and this guy found one that weighed over a pound and he wasn't looking for it he saw it go over and the mushroom led him to it stories like that which indicate not what they indicate to me is that the universe is put together in a way that we don't understand that it is higher dimensional and we are lower dimensional and that if you could see the universe from a higher perspective this man's finding of the meteor was inevitable trivial and couldn't have happened any other way i'll tell you one more story and then i'll stop this is not a magical story this is an almost magical story that tells you you have to be careful when judging magic this happened to me and it relates to the question about fractals and what we'll get into this after uh, this evening i was once with a bunch of people in a teaching situation like this at a beach down north of vandenberg air force base and there's a huge beach there that runs for miles and miles and it's very flat and smooth and i was walking on this beach by myself and i came upon a little black stone <coughs> flat stone about that big around and i noticed this because it was all sand and this was the only thing on the beach and i noticed it and i kept walking and uh, after a while there was another one of these black stones so similar to the first that though i wasn't holding the first it seemed to me it was exactly like it and i thought about this and i was i confess slightly loaded on mushrooms and so i did something i might not have otherwise done i counted the number of steps between the first stone and the second stone in other words i turned around and i walked back to the first stone and i counted the steps it was like 760 steps then i walked back to the second stone and continued walking down the beach and counted my steps and 754 steps later there was the next black stone sitting on the beach now what is going on here is this omen is it magic what is it it's none of this it's that this bay was acting like a huge computer and it was solving a fractal equation of great complexity and the solution to the equation was to deposit a round black stone every every 760 steps give or take eight along this beach but if you didn't know about fractal mathematics, if you couldn't see nature from this point of view, you would be presented with an enigma, you see. And yet what is really happening is that nature is inviting you to understand. Nature is taking you by the hand and saying, you know, I'll lift my skirts this tiny, tiny bit. Do you have enough sense to look underneath, to follow it through, to understand? and the psychedelics are are very similar uh, and they bring you into a similar relationship with nature i mean here's just a little story this is not supernatural or of quite the character of the story i just told but one time i i took something i can't even remember what it was but it was in hawaii and i was sitting on a beach <clears throat> and i was meditating or thinking or something and a crab came along and i was sitting so still that the crab cleaned my fingernails for me every one of them it just came up to me and worked its way from finger to finger to finger until it was done and then it, it went on now you know that's getting into the Tao. i would like uh, to believe <laughs>